Well, we're back in this monstrosity again, and guess what we're going to do? Finally, we're going to do the romance option, especially since we've like completely left it out for the last episodes. But now is the time. Do we get to pick? You are looking a little tired. You only have one heart remaining. If you choose to continue, you could have... Oh! Ah, it could have negative consequences. Okay, then. Righty-ho. So, you only really get three things a day. That's fine, because I'll rest. I assume stuff happens during the night. Oh, it does. You had a lovely laugh and wake feeling revitalized. Your energy has been restored. Magic. Awesome. So, we're going to start it off anyway with uh, with what I said. And we're going to go for a romance option. I'm not sure who to pick. Oh, we only get to pick two? Snooty Booty or McFurry? Uh, McFur McMurphy, not McFurry. Uh, we're going to go Snooty. I think Snooty's probably a good idea. Oh, and there's one that we don't know of yet. Well, that's kind of giving the game away, isn't it? We'll go Snooty. Let's go Snooty. Snooty's easier. Righty-ho. I'm splayed out like a starfish on the beach in my bathing clothes. It's a swelteringly hot day and I find it hard to concentrate on my work. So here I am. I let the cool sea wash over my feet and legs as I lay back on the sand. I hear a long, loud sigh coming from somewhere nearby. I sit up to see where it came from. Snooty booty in repose under the shade of a palm tree is looking about with a concerned expression. One that I've never really seen a cat make before. Well, to be fair, is it isn't even really a cat at this point. It can talk. I'm assuming that these cats used to be exactly like me and that's why they can talk? Although, to be fair, if they did, then I'm sure they would have told... No, but that's the thing. We're, to... oh, we're trying to find out. We're trying to get them to tell me stuff. That's it. I go over to her to see if I can help with something. Are you okay, Snooty Booty? She lets out another long, wistful sigh. To be quite frank with you, human, no, I am not okay. I cannot expose this delicate skin of mine to the sun, but there is something I need to retrieve from further down the beach. It is quite the predicament. All right, I'm going to fetch it for you. Oh, would you really be so kind, human? I'd be very grateful. Sure, it's no problem. We can't have you putting that delicate skin of yours at risk, can we? Snooty Booty looks grave. Indeed not. Skin care must come above all else. Don't you know? One must never expose one's skin to the elements, human. It is really quite ang- I, Shit, I didn't read the last- <laughs> Remember to read all of the words before I skip onto the next sentences, okay? One must never get stressed if one wishes to refrain, retain one's youthful aura. Which is rather difficult on this frightful island. Oh, I know. Believe me. You know, because I'm becoming a cat? What do you mean, how do I know? Because I'm becoming a cat, I just said. Are you stressed? Yes. Ugh. Oh no, that would be ups that would upset me terribly. Really? That's this was kind of sweet of you, I suppose. Of course, you really are a precious thing. I do so hope you are finding your time here pleasant. Yeah, again about the turning into a fucking cat. Don't worry about me, Snooty Booty. I'm fine. Now, what was it you uh, would like me to get for you? Well, before I tell you, I must ask you that you don't inform the others of the whereabouts of this particular item. It is very dear to me, you see, and one of the few luxuries I have to myself. Of course, no problem. I can be discreet when I need to be. I do hope so, human. You see, along the beach, just south of here, there is a tree which bears the ripest of coconuts all year round. It's quite splendid. The coconuts are always so sweet and creamy. Snooty Booty looks as if she's lost in a wonderful dream. Um, sounds lovely. It is. I like to drink the coconut water as often as I can, as it's so good for the skin and waistline. But the less civilized Denzians of the island keep knocking the coconuts down before they're fully matured. Fortunately, no one else seems to have discovered this particular tree yet. Well, okay, Snooty Booty. I'll try and find some coconuts for you. Okay, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna address the elephant in the room right now. How does the cat open the coconut? I will leave you with that. Yeah, my thanks, human. I'm guessing we're gonna have to climb up the fucking tree. You've been walking for a lot longer than Snooty Booty led me to believe. I'm not sure if this is even the right tree. They all look the same to me. Although this one does seem to have more coconuts than the others. I decided to take a chance and bundle up as many as I can, carrying my arms to haul them back to her ladyship. By the time I get back to Snooty Booty, I'm faint from the exertion, not to mention walking so far in the sun. I fall to my knees, panting in front of her. Here you go, boots. She eyes the pile with a distinct air of disapproval. I only needed one coconut human. Oh. These are far too many. Yeah, why did you bring like 12? Well, I do apologize, madame. Tell me you didn't plunder the tree. No, there were plenty on the ground already, so... Oh, well, that's a small mercy. At least you didn't hack them down. Hack them down? With what? Well, your hands are rather large and leathery. Snooty booty, I did not use my hands for deforestation. 
Well, I'm sure you did your very best, although I really don't know what I'm going to do with so many coconuts. You're welcome, I'm sure. I mean, I could have a coconut, you know. I look down at the pile of coconuts and it strikes me properly for the first time how strange it is that there's no creatures on this island to plunder them. Uh, what do you think it is, Snoots, that keeps the wildlife away from this island? Do you mean the magic barrier? Oh yeah, that one. Magnetic barrier. Oh, do keep up, human. I thought you were meant to be a scientist. I realize you must be referring to the force field that surrounds the island. That'd be a deer and crack one open for me. With my enormous hands? Well, you could try, I suppose. I push down the irritation that is slowly rising in me and smile politely. On second thoughts, I'll be right back with a screwdriver. A what? Snooty Booty looks horrified. It's a sharp metal tool that bores into things. What on earth do you need those for? So I can make a hole in the water for the coconut. How else would I get it out? Well, look around you, dear. Look at the nature's bounties. What about that? Well, why not just get a fucking screwdriver? Snooty gestures with a limp or a shard of a rock nearby. Snoots, how do you usually get water out of the coconut when there isn't a human around? <laughs> Boom! This is the question that I wanted answered. Well, the exuberant kibble simply loves to break things. Had you not noticed? It's one of the few reasons I tolerate him, don't you know? Oh! Far better than one of your screw dribbles, don't you think? Uh, not really, no. Are you sure and pick up a rock? It does look like it can actually do the job. Okay, let's give it a try. Here it goes. Holding the coconut in a palm leaf, I gently tap the shell a few times with the stone before it finally whacking it. It cracks open surprisingly easily, and the water drains onto the leaf. There now, see how nature provides you? Yeah, but like, you've got to, uh, rather than drinking out the hole, you have to like catch it in a bloody leaf. You've got to lick it off. Great. So your booty stretches her neck and then up her body towards the leaf. She sticks her tongue out as far as it can go before raising her big eyes to me. I can't quite seem to... Ugh, let me help. I let her struggle for a moment or two before I begin to feel a little bit like a child pulling the wings of a fly. She can't help the way she is. She seems to be struggling, old boots. We've placed my uh, uh, levation slightly out of reach. I'm sorry, would you like me to help? Bring a little closer, perhaps? Well, of course I would, human. Are you being deliberately obtuse? I'd very much like to help you, Snoots. But you make it rather difficult. How? I don't understand. I've been perfectly clear in my instruction. You see, I'm under spell, a very powerful one, which prevents me from following any instruction unless accompanied by some magic words. Oh, would you care to enlighten me? Well, it would go something like this. Please, human, would you mind passing me my liberation? Thank you very much. There's a pause during which I'm not really sure what Snooty Booty is thinking. Suddenly, the Sphinx erupts into pearls of laughter. <laughs> I seem to have forgotten my manners. Please be so kind, human. I would be much obliged. Oh, go on then. I nudge the leaf closer to her, and she delicately laps at it. I truly am indebted. Many thanks. That looks delicious. Mm mm. So he agrees without taking a break. You know, searching for those coconuts was thirsty work. I'm sure it was. She's still laughing at the water. <coughs> oh, my throat's a little bit scratchy, especially in this heat. Snooty Booty finally comes up for air. Quiet. That's the beauty of the coconut, you see. So hydrating and mo most palatable, too. You really ought to try it sometime. I look down at the now dry palm leaf. <laughs> yes, I got idea, Boots. And the very best thing after drinking coconut water is to curl up and have a nap, you know. Beauty sleep is most important. Oh, is that so? Indeed, human. I suppose you now have other things to do. Oh, uh, well. Snooty Booty yawns and closes her eyes. I suppose I do. Sweet dreams, princess. She snores softly in reply. Alright, not being funny, but I could have quite easily broken the one of the 12 coconuts that I brought back. Like, I didn't- I only cracked one open. I could have literally picked one up. Uh, okay, whatever. We're gonna do... Should we do a recon? Or should we do a research? Ready to leave? Once you complete your research, your time on Cat Island will come to an end. Oh, really? Uh, oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, that was a thing. That's weird. Okay, so what have I... I've got this one recon to do. Righty-ho. The security guard I met might have a lead. Let's go talk to him. I've been staring at the back of his head for a long time now. Too long. I'm starting to feel creepy. I just don't understand. All he does is sit in that chair by the dock, eating egg sandwiches and doing crossword puzzles. How does a man like that become a security guard for a place like this? As far as I can tell, his job consists of greeting the boat and eating sandwiches. You've literally just explained this. To make sure nothing unauthorized gets on or off it. Picking up supply deliveries and occasionally taking a long lazy nap of the island. To make sure everything's secure? I wonder what he knows about the research that goes on here. If anything, he doesn't seem to be interested regardless. I decide it's time to get to know the island bouncer and join him at the dock. I sit next to Zane. Me on the sand. Him in that chair. 
He's not wearing his big coat, and the short sleeve shirt allows me to notice for the first time how surprisingly muscular he is. I never truly thought of him as a security in the bodyguard sense, but now squinting at him sideways, trying not to stare at too obviously, I begin to see him in a new light. I pluck up the courage to talk. Hey Zane, you alright? Are you trying to start a conversation? No, of course I'm fucking not. He says this without looking up for his crossword puzzle. I um, suppose I am, yes. I don't get to chat to humans much during my job. Research assistant 125. He rolls the words out like he's reading them. Oh yes, I guess that's me. So what does the number stand for anyhow? You don't know? He asks monotonously. His eyes still glued to his crossword puzzle. No, actually, to be honest, Zane, I don't know much at all. There's a definite lack of intel sharing on this project. Which project will that be? Uh, this one. The whole research project that's going on. Is there more than one? Depends who you ask. You, I, I was just asking you, really. I don't understand your job. I don't need to. I don't care about things I don't need to. What do you care about? Zane looks at me for the first time. I really like... Why is he like massive chin in this photo and like just normal here? You really want to talk, didn't you? Well, there's not much else to do here besides I'm not interested in all, aren't you? My interest consists of what's for dinner and when's my next puzzle book's coming. When's it coming? You get it delivered? Comes with the mail. He's back to not looking at me again. The mail? You mean the parcels? And the letters, yeah. The letters? Who would we go into the trouble of sending mail all the way out here when we have email? I laugh, but Zan looks very serious. It's safe for sending mail the old-fashioned way. With email, there's viruses, hackers, worms, cyber terrorists. I get the feeling he's not very tech-savvy. Yeah, but anyone can open and read a letter, right? Not if I'm around. And besides, who would suspect that something important would be a fra fragrant pink envelope? With an awkward silence, of course, being my usual socially inept self. I'm desperate to fill it. Need any help with that crossword? I'm pretty good. I can even do the cryptic puzzle in the Daily Inquirer. This line usually gains me a little kudos, but Zane simply ignores me. I decide to come out and say what's on my mind. I mean, I can't make things more worse. Zane, have you ever noticed anything strange going on here? Cats behaving weirdly? Zane suddenly looks up, his eyes looking straight on mine. Unwavering and hard. No. Have you? Well, not exactly, but he's looking at me properly for the first time since we met. I have definitely captured his attention, but I'm too nervous to follow through. I'm just being silly. The lack of human company gets to me. Gives me a daft ideas. Such as? He's still staring at me, though he's trying to read my mind. Sometimes when I'm out tagging, I feel like they're playing games with me. Like children, hide and seek, that kind of thing. Some of those cats may be cleverer than any of us give them credit for. Now it's my turn to be intrigued. In what way? They know when to stay out the sun. You're going pink. The moment, if there was one, is over. I decide maybe Zane isn't the best person to talk about my concerns. Feeling unwanted and slightly dejected, I decide to head back to camp. I stand in the brush and sta uh, get the sand off me. What's the final letter word for solitude? Alone. Zane silently scribbles in his book as I leave. Cool. <laughs> I can't... That's, uh... That went really well, definitely. Oh, so great. So now, I don't think we can do any more recon. I think everything is gone for recon. Right, so we don't have any more recons. Uh, we can't complete the research because then we're done, I think. Once you complete your research, your time on Cat Island will come to an end. Have you seen everything you wanted to see? No, I have more to do. Yeah, so I can't do any research because I'll have to leave. Uh, I suppose I'll do... Yeah, I suppose I'll do this then. Oh! Oh, that's pretty weird. So if you pick one, the other one seems to be unable to do it. Alright, then Snooty Booty is again. Great, we've got the dickhead cat that we've got to deal with now. Snooty Booty, Snoots! I really, I, I, I don't want to keep calling her that. It's such an awful name. I've been searching for the Sphinx for what feels like ages. For a cat that never seems to move, she's surprisingly difficult to find. I am answered eventually by an unintelligible murmur coming from the shade of a nearby tree. Of course she's leaving. Snooty? I poke at her gently and try to rouse her. I have something for you. A gift, is it? Ha Wait, what did I pick up? Oh, human, it's you. Whatever you're doing up and about at this time. It's midday boots. Snooty stares at me uncomprehendedly. I have an hour for lunch. I came to spend it with you. But if it's not a convenient time, I could always find something else to do. Wait, you mentioned a gift? Well, yeah, I suppose. I had the idea when we were drinking. Well, when you were drinking from the coconut. I fetched for you the other day. I took some of the remaining coconuts over to the lab and cooked up some coconut oil. Snooty Booty opens her mouth wide. I sit awkwardly, staring at her, unsure what exactly she's doing. Well, I'm ready for my breakfast, human. 
It's hard sometimes to know whether to laugh or spit, <laughs> or spit with this spoiled feline. No, Boots, this isn't for eating. You mentioned how good drinking coconut oil was for you. So I thought you might like some coconut oil to rub into your skin. Keeps you moisturized and youthful. Aren't you terribly clever? I can't help but blush. Nitty Booty really compliments anyone. So I feel honored. You may begin. <laughs> I may begin. Snooty lolls onto her back, exposing her plump pink tummy to me. Oh, you want me to rub it in for you? Oh my god, it's a, it's a cat. It doesn't have fingers. Uh, simply smiles in response. Well, a please wouldn't go, miss. Yes, well, I didn't want to make a fuss, but I would prefer it if you asked first. I sigh. There's not much point in arguing with Princess Snooty. I don't think she actually means to be rude. Sometimes she just doesn't seem to understand how to talk to people as equals. I don't have the energy to deal with that today, but make a note at some point. Uh, she and I are going to have a little chat about etiquette. Please, may I rub this coconut oil into your skin? Yes, you may. I pull some of the pungent liquid onto the palm of my hand and rub it together with the other. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never massaged anyone before, but I work along the lines of putting sun cream on a friend. As a, oh, oh. God, okay. I, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to read this. As, uh, as I touch the warm, loose skin on Snooty's primordial pouch, I'm struck by how delicate she really is. And I try to be as gentle as possible. Is that okay? You're really skillful with your hands, human. Uh, okay. I do so wish I had those thumb things. They seem useful. They're quite handy, to be honest, but paws are cool too. Hmm. Snooty lazily inspects one of her paws. Do my paws next, will you? Snooty's skin is reacting to the well, to the treatment has become shiny and pl plalient. I see the good, is, uh, the good it's doing. I move on to massage her paws, but I'm quite taken aback by the length of her claws. Oh, my boots, your claws are really quite long. Don't you use a scratch post or anything? Uh, what? You know, something abrasive to file them on. Whatever for? Well, it's part of being a cat, really. Stop some catching on things. Snooty is peering at me with one judgmental eye open. Called on what exactly? I don't know, Snoots. Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Oh, no, no, no. Do go on. I'm intrigued. You seem to be implying that there is a degree of neglect in my grooming. <laughs> no, I most certainly am not. You're by far the most high maintenance. I mean, highly groomed cat I've ever seen. But you're a perfect example of a sphinx. I'm a what? Sphinx? She's trying to get me to say perfect again. It's hard to keep my face straight. Absolutely perfect, Snoots. And you're an expert. I am. Well, I, I wouldn't call myself that, but I've been reading on sphinx cats and you have all the characteristics of a pedigree. That's very sweet of you, so remind me. What would those be? Uh... <laughs> I hesitate for a moment trying to remember what pause for thought listed as top features to look for in a Sphinx. There was rather a lot of info. I want to give it all the best bits. Uh, flatter her. Well, let's see. I have a feeling Snooty wouldn't appreciate some of the common qualities of a Sphinx, including wrinkles and pot bellies. So I decided to cherry pick and dress it up a bit. Sphinx heads are well known for their beautiful big eyes and high prominent cheekbones. She extends her neck and winds her eyes. She also appears to suck in her cheeks, which gives her the look of someone who's not wearing her their tenches. It's very disconcerting. And they're very shapely physique. This isn't strictly true. Swingses tend to be quite muscular, but something tells me Snooty Booty wouldn't approve of that description. She has now extended her entire body into what looks like a yoga stretch. I see. Go on. The skin is soft, buttery. This is sort of true because they don't have fur to soak up excess oil. Swing cats can become quite greasy. It's recommended that they are uh, padded down with a cloth as part of their regular grooming. <laughs> oh, grim. I'm listening and uh, they're very regal. Regal? I'm not sure where I got that word from, but Snooty seems to enjoy it. Well, well, human, it seems you have a vast accurate knowledge of my kind. I'm rather impressed with you. I blush. It's not often that she gives out compliments, but when she does, it makes you feel like a million dollars. Thank you, Snoots. Which prompts me to take uh, what you were saying about my clothes far more seriously. Do you think I ought to tend to them? In what way? The length. I believe you're suggesting they ought to be trimmed. I wasn't saying that, but I don't think it's such a bad idea. Perhaps I can help you with that. A manicure? What a marvellous idea. Let's say tomorrow, same time. Well, if I can get away, I feel like she's played me. <laughs> you really are most kind. Thank you, human. And with those few words, my heart is a puddle at her feet. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's starting to get weird, and the reality of this game is starting to sink in. I think the antidote is slowly going down. 8.3, I swear it was at 9 a minute ago. I don't actually know. Is there anything to look on the recon thing quickly before we leave? Uh, we'll continue anyway, because we got to double check. Okay, there's nothing here. That's fine. So, we will call that a day well job done well. 
that is the third episode of this game, I think. Okay, now, bear with me. It's starting to get weird. Start Starting to get weird, right? Okay, very, very, very strange. I assume that this is probably going to carry on through multiple playthroughs. Because I don't know how this is going to keep going past whatever. I only have 8.3 in the antidote. So, we'll figure out how it works out, maybe. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, that is the end of this episode. I hope you did enjoy it, and I shall see you next time.